This generation is dangerously obsessed with health and wellness, and this toxic wellness culture is actually making us feel, well, unwell. Have you noticed how social media has become increasingly dominated by so-called influencers? Because the negative effects that Instagram and Facebook can have on teenagers' mental health. It's actually so unhealthy, it's making people sick. As someone who has spent a great deal of time watching diet and at-home workout videos, I've recently come to the conclusion that those videos that are there to make me feel better about myself are actually making me feel worse. Why? Because this obsession with living and eating healthy is not doing as it should. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about the internet's toxic wellness culture. Keep watching to find out what it is and how it's dangerous. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed, so if you like this video or would like to see more, please subscribe. It's free and you can always change your mind later. I hope you enjoy! What is wellness? It's a term that dates all the way back to the 1650s, but was first coined as a widely used medical term by Halbert Dunn in 1950. He combined the words well-being and fitness to form wellness. Now, according to Pfizer.com, wellness is known as the act of practicing healthy habits on a daily basis to attain better physical and mental health outcomes, so that instead of just surviving, you're thriving. The Toxic Health and Wellness Culture Many people have started obsessing over calories and macros, portion sizes, times of eating, etc. At the same time, we convince ourselves that obsessing over these things is for our own good. After all, the key to living healthily must be in the things we eat and the actions we take. Which isn't entirely untrue, but this culture of jumping on and off diet fads and workout trends isn't the way to go. In fact, toxic wellness is this misunderstanding that being healthy means solving all of our health problems with diets, workouts, practitioners, detoxes, with going vegan, keto, paleo, low carb, whatever. I'm sure you've heard of at least a couple of these practices. The problem with social media is good and bad food. I myself have been a victim to social media's portrayal of good food and bad food. For a pretty long time, my Instagram feed was just stuck and it kept giving me these posts of the do's and don'ts of eating. Which alternative has less calories, less sugar, less carbs, less fat, more protein, more macros, more healthy, and less unhealthy. But the world isn't black and white. There isn't a defined straight line between good food and bad food. You can eat cake and ice cream one day without feeling gross, just as you can eat broccoli and salmon another day. I really dislike social media's definition of healthy foods because while yes, kale and almonds are good for you, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't eat burgers and fries once in a while. It also doesn't mean you have to eat kale and almonds just because they're healthy, because I definitely will not be willingly eating kale any day. The workout trend. Another part of this obsession with being healthy is the obsession of working out to be fit. Have you ever watched any of those at-home workouts? Yes, those videos by Chloe Tang and Daisy Peach among countless other channels promoting workouts that you can do at home, in your living room, nice and easy, without equipment. However, criticizing those workout videos does not mean I am discouraging you from doing them. Exercising is a great way of staying so-called healthy. You just need to find the way of exercising that works the best for you, one you will actually enjoy and will spend time doing. Just keep that in mind. A cure. Finally, we need to address the obsession with the so-called cure. It's like a cure to everything, basically. We gaslight ourselves into thinking that there's a magical cure, whether it's a fix-all pill, diet, or doctor. There isn't a cure-all. Everyone's bodies and situations are so vastly different that while something might work for someone else, it may not necessarily work for you. So instead of blindly following every diet trend that pops up on your For You page, instead of spending hours a day counting calories and doing crunches, start living life the way you want to live it. Stop obsessing over health, weight, food, and exercise. Eat what you want, listen to your cravings. Be smart about the food you eat. Stop doing workouts that you hate. Instead, find ways of exercise that you enjoy doing, whether it's swimming, dancing, or walking your dog. Find ways to live your way of healthy. 